Kylie, and I am so excited you're here because there's something in the... <laughs> Weird. <laughs> Don't know what that was. There's something in the maker... The maker box today. The maker box is really making some weird sounds, isn't it? Kind of sounds like it's really hungry. It's not my stomach making those sounds. I know that. It is. I am so hungry. I was so excited to come hang out with you that I forgot to eat lunch. Okay, it's all right. It's okay. Let's craft and then I'll snack. Okay, maker box, what you got? <laughs> I know what I'm hoping for. Lunch. Maker box. Maker box never disappoints. Do you know what this is? An apple. One of my favorite fruits. Mm. Okay. I think I'm definitely going to have better art today because I fueled up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow. Have you ever really looked at an apple? They're so beautiful. Have you ever looked inside an apple? Do you want to? Okay, there is a cutting board out in my studio right now. Let's go check it out, come on. Normally when I cut an apple, I cut it right in half this way by the stem. If you're doing this at home and you're using a knife, make sure that you have a grown up with you and that they help you as you need them to. So cool, you can see the core of the apple right here and I see some seeds. I always think seeds are one of the most amazing parts of nature because out of this little seed comes a big apple tree. Have you ever visited an apple orchard or seen apples growing on a tree? It's incredible. So many good things come from trees. So many good things from this one little seed. It kind of reminds me about how when you're younger, Sometimes you can feel like, I'm so young, I'm so little. What difference can I make? A huge difference. Sometimes we think, I'm just one person. What difference can I make in the world? A huge difference. Small little things can make incredible things, just like you and me. When I'm cutting these to eat, I usually cut the core out like this because it's a little hard to chew. And then, I love how they taste, but I also love all the different colors they come in. Like, hmm, this one is a little bit red. And what other colors do you see? Mm, maybe a little yellow. I even see a little bit of green. Right there, right there, right there. Nature is an incredible painter, huh? Mm -hmm. I had an idea. Since we're already in the studio and we already have this great fruit and we already have paint. What if I went downstairs and got some of my favorite fruits and vegetables, we cut them and use them to make art. You like this idea? Let's do it. Okay, my friends, I grabbed some fruits and vegetables from my kitchen for us to explore together today. I wonder if there's some of things in this bowl that you've never tried before. We'll find out. I also grabbed a palette, some brushes, and some paper so we can make some amazing vegetable and fruit art. Oh, so excited. Let's start with a classic red for our apple. I'm gonna put some paint on my palette and spread it out with a brush. And now I'm gonna use this kind of like a stamp. I'm gonna dip it in my paint. Perfect, and ready? Cool! I wonder what will happen if I don't load it up again with paint, but just make another print right now. Ooh, which one do you like better? Hmm, I really like this one because you can kind of see the stem. Awesome. For this apple, I'm gonna cut it the other way because there's a really cool surprise in apples if you cut them this way. Do you know what it is? Let me show you. Look, it's a star. Isn't that cool? I love it. This time I'm gonna paint right on my apple instead of dipping. Okay. 
Okay, okay. What color should we do next? Hmm. Maybe let's try to use some of those colors we saw earlier in the skin, yellow and green. I did a little bit of research on a lot of the fruits and vegetables that we're going to be using today, and I learned so much. Plants are fascinating. Some people describe fruit as the part of the plant that's made out of the flower. And then vegetables are just kind of the other parts of the plant that we eat, like the leaves or the roots or the stems. The interesting fact I learned about apples is that apples are made up of 25% air. Just like <sighs> air. I just ate one quarter of an apple right there. <laughs> I could do this all day, but we have other fruits and vegetables to explore. Mm, I love this apple art. Mm, what should we pick next? Do you know what this is? This is called celery. Celery grows in the ground kind of like this. So basically, the part of the plant that we're eating when we eat celery is the stem. Do you like eating celery? Mm. Mm. When we take celery apart, and when you chew it too, you might notice these long stringy parts of celery. They're a little hard to chew sometimes. These are called kalinkama. Yeah, that's right, kalinkama, kind of fun to say. These are just long, strong strings of cells that form to help plants that are like this stand up straight. It's kind of like the spine in your back. They help this not be all flumpy. Now that we tried it, now that we learned a little bit about it, let's make a celery print. I think this will be a really cool print. It kind of looks like a flower. Let's try to make this print look like flowers. So let's see, we could probably use this part for the stems of the flower, right? Let's do it. Ooh, let's do some leaves by using this side of the celery. I'm really liking this part. <laughs> Excuse my snack. Time for the flowers. It's amazing. Who knew? You could paint a whole flower scene by using one plant. flowers. Next up, I have an onion. This is a purple onion, which is my favorite because I think they're so pretty. Let's cut this bad boy open. Aren't they beautiful? I love that deep purple color and it's between every layer. <laughs> Whoa. I don't know why, but onions just make me really emotional. <laughs> Just kidding, but the strong smell of onions can really make your eyes water or make your nose run. That's both happening to me right now. <gasps> Do you know that onions grow from the inside out? So these layers on the outside actually are the oldest part of the onion. The newest parts are in there. So it grows this layer and then it grows a new layer in here and then a new layer, and that's why it grows in these rings like this. Kind of wonder if this will leave a color without any paint. A little bit, see? But also let's add some paint. Will it make a big circle or will we be able to see the rings? I don't know. Ooh, we can see the rings. Ooh, that's really cool. Ooh, I've never made a print that made my nose run so much. get a print that's just a circle with this. What do you think of this onion print? I 
love it. Do you know what this is? It doesn't look how it looks when we eat it yet, but this is how it looks in the fields. This is corn. Corn grows on tall stalks, and when you pick the stalks, they come with this, which is called the husk. When we open it up, we're gonna start to see these little strings. You see them? These are kind of like pollen straws. I bet you never thought of them that way before. But when this husk is up, all those kernels can't get pollinated. But guess what's hanging out the top? All these strings. There is a string for each kernel of corn on every ear of corn. The strings are attached to each kernel. So pollinators can come get pollen on these little strings. And then the kernel can suck it up inside the husk. It can stay nice and safe, but still get everything it needs to become this delicious ear of corn. All right, corny corn, what should we do with you? <sighs> Let's see. Oh yeah, I feel so powerful. <laughs> I left a kernel on the palate. First time that's happened. All right, here we go. Ooh, it's so juicy. Cool. Spreading that out, and I'm gonna give this a little roll. Here we go. Oh, it's as cool as I was hoping it would be. Last thing I wanna try with this corn is to make a print with this part. I don't know what's gonna happen, but only one way to find out, as we like to say. Sweet. What do you think of our corn print? I, for one, give it 10 out of 10 kernels. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but it's good. It's good. Next up, let's talk about carrots and potatoes. These are awesome vegetables that are so interesting because when they grow, they grow underground. This part of the plant that we eat is the root of the plant. So when you look out at a field of carrots or a field of potatoes, you just see the green part. You have to judge by the green part when these are ready to pull up and eat or paint with. You can eat carrots raw or cooked. I wonder what your favorite is. Just by cutting the end of this carrot, I made two different sizes of circle. star. A good old potato, the world's most popular vegetable, but not necessarily always known for its beauty. Today, it all changes for you, potato. This will be an oval because it already is. And we'll make this one a square. And oh, we need a nice triangle. Let's keep going. We'll do a pentagon next, five sides. Hexagon. Not perfect, but super fun. And I'm gonna go with an octagon. Octagon, eight sides.
Do you have a favorite shape? Favorite color? Favorite fruit or vegetable? Oh man, you can make a whole print just with favorites. This is one of my favorite vegetables ever. It's called a bell pepper. It comes in some different colors, green, yellow, orange, red. And what's interesting about these plants is all of those colors come from the same plant. The only thing that's different about them besides their color is how long they stayed on the vine, how ripe they are. The green got picked the soonest, and so they're less sweet. And then all the way to the red, they stayed on the plant the longest, so they're the sweetest. I love this pepper, it's unique. Let's make some prints. Ta-da! I made all the different color peppers. From least sweet to sweetest. From least ripe to most. It also kind of reminds me of like a vegetable stoplight. Green pepper, go! Red pepper, stop! Do you know what this vegetable is? Broccoli. My favorite thing about broccoli has got to be that it looks like little trees. The last thing I found in my fridge, which I thought was both delicious and beautiful for art making today, strawberries. One of my all time favorites. I think they're beautiful and delicious. I love growing them. I grow them in my yard every year, even though the rabbits and chipmunks mostly are the ones who eat them. Let's see how they are to make a print out of. Strawberries are unique because unlike most fruits, they keep their seeds on the outside of themselves, which I also think will make for a really great and interesting print. Strawberry, I knew you'd be a great artist. It's making an amazing texture. Thank you so much for making all this amazing art with me today. Do you have a favorite? My favorite thing about making it was hanging out with you. But my second favorite thing was not just that we came up with some very cool prints, but that we tried new things. I love that about art. Trying new things in art and being brave about it helps us realize that we can try new things everywhere in our lives and be brave about that too. If it works, great. If it doesn't, we learn. If we like a new food, awesome. If we don't, now we know. We can try it again another time. I love hanging out with you. If you want to make more things like this with me, just search for Kylie Makes It. K-Y-L-E-E, -E, that's me. And I'll see you soon.